Jimmy was just horrible. Nasty piece of work. One of the two worst people I've ever worked with in my life. Hey, don't give me any shit. When we think of legendary martial artist actors, the first man that comes to mind is Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee set a new standard for Asian action heroes and he became a household name worldwide. However, most people don't know that Bruce Lee was inspired by a legendary actor who came years before him. His name was Jimmy Wong Yu. Jimmy Wong Yu, who's known as Jimmy Wong or Wong Yu, was special because he was not only a legendary actor, he was also a certified gangster. Although he is not well known outside of Asia, Jimmy's controversial career lasted over five decades and he played an important role in the lives of many famous people. The story of martial arts films and the dark side of Hong Kong cinema cannot be told without telling the story of Jimmy Wong Yu. Jimmy Wong Yu was born Wong Zhang Quan in Shanghai, China in 1943. He grew up as a tough kid and was fighting with local gangs on the streets before he had a career fighting on camera. He trained to be a soldier as a young man and was also a swimming champion. Jimmy relocated to Hong Kong in 1960 to pursue an acting career with the famous Shaw Brothers Production Company. Jimmy's good looks, toughness and charisma landed him roles in some popular Hong Kong films. Despite having no formal martial arts training, his street fighting and military days gave him all the knowledge he needed to become a star. Around this time, the Hong Kong movie industry was infested with the triad members and associates. Not only were there gangsters running the show behind the scenes, there were also gangsters who were famous actors such as high-ranking 14K triad member Michael Chan. Jimmy Wong earned the respect of many underworld figures and he got himself associated with triad members in the 14K and the Sun Yeon triad. The Shaw Brothers production company was particularly known for their corruption and triad connections. It was through this company that Jimmy became close to the famous gangster director Lo Wei who is best known for launching the careers of Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan. Jimmy Wong was in several minor films throughout the mid to late 60s. He was largely unrecognized for the first few years, but he was propelled to stardom after his star role in a 1967 Hong Kong classic called The One-Armed Swordsman. After this film, Jimmy instantly became a celebrity in Hong Kong and he starred in several other classics in the late 60s and early 70s. His role in a 1970s film titled The Chinese Boxer solidified his status as the number one actor of the martial arts genre. Jimmy went on to star in many other films of different genres including gangster themed thrillers. After the success of The Chinese Boxer, Jimmy Wong Yu began to have disputes with his production company The Shaw Brothers. This led to him being on bad terms with many influential people like the famous director Lo Wei, who was apparently a member of the Sun Yeon Triad. To reignite his career, Jimmy Wong relocated to Taiwan. While he was in Taiwan, a new rising star showed up in the Hong Kong movie scene, who was none other than the legendary actor Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee was no stranger to the triads as well. He grew up as a street fighter who allegedly beat down a powerful triad member's son, which prompted his father to relocate the family to the US. Lee initially pursued an acting career in America, but he didn't see his career going anywhere in Hollywood so he returned to Hong Kong to gain more popularity. Lo Wei took Bruce Lee under his wing and ignited his career with the 1971 film The Big Boss. Bruce Lee's talent, good looks and charisma was unlike anything seen before. He was on his way to take the crown away from Jimmy. Some people claimed that Jimmy Wong was too distracted by the street life, which allowed Bruce Lee to become number one. Lee went on to become a household name and the most popular Asian movie star worldwide. Despite Bruce Lee practically replacing Jimmy Wong's career, the two maintained a close relationship. In 1973, tragedy struck and Bruce Lee was found dead in a Hong Kong apartment at the age of 32. The death shocked many and opened the door for many conspiracy theorists who believed Bruce Lee was murdered. One of the claims was that the murder was carried out by triad members linked to the movie industry. These claims have never been proven and it's been declared that Lee suffered a bad reaction to pain medication. Bruce Lee's death opened the spot for Wong to retake his number one position. Asia's international superstar Jimmy Wang Yu arrives in Sydney to star in The Man from Hong Kong. Jimmy Wang Yu is regarded as Asia's Steve McQueen. While in Taiwan, Jimmy Wang Yu got associated with many more underworld figures. One powerful gangster took a liking to Jimmy. His name was Chen Chi Lee, aka Dry Duck. 
Chen was the leader of the largest and most powerful triad in Taiwan, the United Bamboo Gang. This gang was nothing to play with and their power and influence is still prominent today. Jimmy Wong remained an associate of Chen but initially refused to formally join the gang. However, things changed in 1976 after a major altercation at a restaurant. Jimmy Wong was attending a banquet for a film company which had many gangsters in attendance. Jimmy was there with a few friends of his from the United Bamboo Gang. As the night went on, a dispute broke out with the female hostess, which caused Jimmy to angrily break a glass of wine. Members of the Four Seas Gang confronted Jimmy and his crew in defense of the female. The dispute led to the United Bamboo crew stabbing and killing two Four Seas members. After the killing, Chen Chi Li inducted Jimmy Wong Yu as an official member of the gang and he helped Jimmy escape prosecution. This is around the time when a new talented actor and trained martial artist emerged into the scene. His name was Jackie Chan. Chan was in many films for years as an extra, but was not yet seen as a potential star. Director Lo Wei started up Jackie's career with the 1976 film, New Fist of Glory, which gave Jackie his first leading role. Chan also starred next to Jimmy Wong Yu in the 1976 film, Killer Meteors. Despite Jackie's initial success, Lo Wei still didn't see Jackie as a star. Jackie Chan soon came to realize the gangsters in the industry were holding back his potential. However, some gangsters like Michael Chan and Jimmy Wong had his back. Despite Jackie's guidance from certified gang members, he still got himself caught up in the madness. Jackie Chan was apparently not happy with Lo Wei and the low-budget contract he was given. Famous Hong Kong producer Raymond Chow took advantage of the situation and offered him a new contract with the Golden Harvest Production Company. Lo Wei then decided to loan Jackie out temporarily to Chow. Under Chow, Jackie Chan's career instantly blew up with the 1978 films Snake and Eagle's Shadow and The Drunken Master. Lo Wei, who became jealous of Chan's newfound success, tried to block Chan from working with Golden Harvest again. Then in 1979, Jackie Chan defined Lo Wei's wishes and shot a Golden Harvest film called The Young Master. This decision by Chan caused a war to break out in the industry between triads and production companies. Jackie Chan was scared for his life and he knew only a gangster could get him out of this mess. Chan then decided to reach out to none other than Jimmy Wong Yu. According to Jackie's autobiography, I Am Jackie Chan, his manager told him, Jimmy is going to try to broker a peace agreement between the Sun Yeon Triad, Lo Wei, and the Golden Harvest. If he succeeds, we're off the hook. If he fails, it really doesn't matter, because you won't be around to find out. In other words, Jackie Chan would be killed if both sides didn't come to an agreement. Jimmy and his people sat down with the Sun Yeon members, in which an altercation occurred which was broken up by the police. It's unclear what exactly happened during that meeting, but Jimmy successfully saved Jackie's life and got him out of the contract with the Shaw brothers. Jimmy was paid 2 million Hong Kong dollars by the Golden Harvest Company for his efforts. Um, in Taiwan, one of the actors, I think it was while you were in Taiwan, you met, uh, was Jackie Chan. And I understand you played a big role in his career at this time. He was in a contract with Lo Wei. Yes. Can you tell the audience a little bit what kind of guy Lo Wei was? Lo Wei is a good director, but he is like uh, uh, Ronald Shaw, like every boss the same. The money we pay, very low pay to Jackie Chan. That time, each picture I think is about uh, 7,000 US dollars, pay one film. Had Lo Wei had friends who were triad? that you had to negotiate with? This is the story I've heard. I don't I, know what the real story is. I, I stole the contract. I did that way. <laughs> Jackie Chan was very grateful for Jimmy Wong, and he returned the favor later in the 80s by starring in two films that Jimmy produced, titled Fantasy Mission Force and Island of Fire. Chan still honors Jimmy till this day and was quoted saying, There are three peak eras of Hong Kong martial arts films. The era of Jimmy Wong Yu, the era of Bruce Lee, and finally, the era of Jackie Chan. 
Not long after the events with Jackie Chan, Jimmy Wong Yu got himself caught up in more danger. Since the 1976 murder incident in Taiwan, tensions between the United Bamboo Gang and the Four Seas Gang were rising. Both sides lost men in retaliation stemming from the 1976 incident. Jimmy Wong was a high target in this war, and on January 10th, 1981, he was stabbed seven times at a restaurant and almost died. In April of that same year, the Bamboo Gang got their revenge by stabbing and killing a Four Seas member who was believed to be responsible for Jimmy's stabbing. Later that year, both sides were in court for the January 10th incident. A major brawl broke out inside the courthouse which left men on both sides dead or injured. Jimmy Wong Yu, who was in the trenches during the courtroom incident, was arrested and sentenced to two years and six months. With the aid of powerful people, Jimmy ended up being found not guilty and was let off completely. After the case, Wong supposedly retired from the mob life to focus on his film and business career. Due to his criminal past, Jimmy's reputation in the film industry was ruined and not many film companies wanted to work with him. However, he still managed to work hard to be involved with acting, producing, and directing more than a few films in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. In modern Hong Kong cinema, it appears that most of the gangsters and tough guys are long gone. It was said that the triad's influence in the film industry declined significantly since the late 90s when directors and producers were being murdered and intimidated frequently. Like a scene from one of his own gangster movies, filmmaker Wong Long Wai was shot dead as he lay in a hospital bed. Days earlier, another producer, Choi Chi Ming, was gunned down as he left his film company's office. The latest violent turns in the growing triad battle for domination of Hong Kong's movie business. I'm the first one to say in the newspaper, I hate the bloody gangsters. Things got so bad that many in the industry held a protest against the triads in 1996. Jackie Chan, who had a long history of confrontations with the triads, was one of the protesters. He was quoted saying the protest was not against all triads, only the indisciplined ones. Although Jimmy seemed to keep a clean record for more than two decades, his name was brought up by authorities once more in 2007. Jimmy allegedly received a murder contract from the KMT to take out a politician. It was said that Jimmy declined the contract because of his loyalty to Chen Shi Li, who was sentenced to life in prison by the KMT. This was the last time Jimmy was mentioned in connection to organized crime. In 2011, Jimmy Wong was struggling with health issues after he suffered a stroke. He apparently lost feeling in half his body, but he managed to work hard to gain full feeling again. Wong's last acting role was a 2013 Taiwanese film called Soul, in which he had a leading role. Now in his late 70s, Jimmy Wong is retired from acting, but is still involved in filmmaking behind the scenes. Many famous Asian actors still pay homage to Jimmy Wong Yu and recognize that without him, we probably would never had guys like Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan. Also, the actors were inspired by Jimmy, are responsible for inspiring countless actors that we still have today. Jimmy will also be known as someone who actually lived what he portrayed in film. His behavior off camera showed us that sometimes it's not an act, and art can imitate real life. Jimmy Wong Yu's legacy as a tough guy and legendary actor is solidified and hopefully it will live on forever.